Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. I'm here in my garage gym. Hopefully, you're now in your own home gym or setting it up or waiting for stuff to come in. And hopefully, you're just not waiting for stuff to come in stock because it is a wild time out there. And I apologize if you've watched some of my recent videos about what to buy. I promise at the time of upload, all those things are readily available. But everybody's buying home gym stuff now, and it's just wild out there. It's really interesting to see the demand for home gyms. But I think one of the things people are going to really run into is still finding that motivation to get a good training session in at home. It's very tough to do. Now, you might get initially into it just because you've been out of the commercial gym for a while and you just will take anything you can get. But over time, a lot of people do lose interest in training at home, which is why oftentimes the secondhand market tends to be such a huge market and a lot of equipment available because people would buy stuff and just find out they didn't end up using it. So they try to sell it to get their money back. Now, I don't know how long we're in this whole quarantine type area for the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, who's to say, but I will say there are a couple of tips I can give you to make sure that you're really being effective and efficient training at home and hopefully having a better overall experience. Now, me personally, I've been training at home the last five years. I actually work from home a majority of the time now because my office is about a three hour round trip, so I try not to go in when I can. Having two young kids at home also helps and hurts. It helps because I get to see them all the time because I'm always here. It hurts because I'm always here also, so if I need to step out of the gym or do whatever for work, I have to do that and I want to do that because family comes first. So one of the big tips I wanna give you guys when setting up a home gym is make sure you're trying to define the space as much as possible. And I know for some of us that's not possible. It's a shared space because we hadn't been planning on having a home gym, so maybe it's in a one stall of a two car garage, Maybe it's in a basement where you have a bunch of other stuff. Maybe it's in your living room, bedroom, because you're in a one bedroom apartment somewhere. But try to make as defined of space as possible for you, meaning that you shut off all other distractions within that space. So don't have it be where you have a couch and a TV because typically people tend to rest a little bit more, pay attention to other stuff going on. Maybe if it's a common area where people are coming in and out, hopefully you're keeping your six feet of space, which is roughly about this much space right here, is there's a lot of distractions. That's one of the things that I found from actually going from working in an office to working at home. I found I was much more productive because I wasn't spending as much time actually talking to people outside of what I was trying to focus on. Hello, Peter. What's happening? And that's the same thing with the gym. I found that actually can really help, again, given the fact that you set up some alone time and some boundaries about who can come in and bother you and whatnot. So definitely try to set up as defined of space as possible. Hopefully you have a little bit of room to move around because that makes coming into the gym more enjoyable than having the gym being a space that you might already be in where again, it's very easy to get distracted. And speaking of distractions, although in a commercial gym, you share a lot of those same things from people having TV on, people coming up to talk to you, having your phone available to you between sets, Personally, I found you really have to be careful about getting too into your phone while at home. Because there's no distractions, because there's no one waiting for that bench, that squat rack to curl in, you tend to, or at least I tend to, find more time between sets where I'm not paying attention. It's very easy to get lost in stuff because I'm by myself and no one's really holding me accountable except for me. So really try to limit yourself as far as playing on your phone between sets or doing other things outside of training. Again, have a defined space, coming here with as little distraction as possible. One of the things that can really help is some good quality headphones. I say that because depending on where your space is, depending on who else is home at your house, it might be tough to really blast the music like you really want to, which typically in a home gym is one of the key things I really like, being able to pump up the music and pump up the volume, so to say, even with an open garage door. But now that everyone's home kind of permanently and grounded, you might not be able to blast music, especially if you have young kids that aren't in school anymore, they're trying to take naps, do other things, whatever the case may be. Get a good quality pair of headphones so you can really put that on, play whatever music you want at whatever level of loudness you want. I know for me personally, that always kind of helps me get a little bit of tunnel vision and really trying to focus on what I'm doing. So those are first two tips. So number one, set a defined space, make sure you're free of distractions, get some good music, put on some headphones, whatever the case may be. I would also really say set some defined times for training. Now, obviously, again, normal circumstances, training at home is great because your gym is open 24-7, 365, meaning that if I have an hour between conference calls for work, I can come in and get my training in right then. Or if the kids are napping and I'm not deadlifting, I can come in and train during that time. Or if I want to train when everyone's going to sleep, I can do that. The problem is though, for a lot of people, having that kind of flexibility usually leads to them putting off when they're gonna train because 
I can just do it later. Say, oh, you know what? I don't really feel like training now. I'll do it during my lunch break. Oh, lunch is coming. I'm kind of hungry. I haven't eaten for a while. I'm going to eat and I'll just train later. Typically what happens is people tend to push it off to the point where they don't get it in. So if you can, try to set up a routine schedule. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same time every day, but identify a time during each day of the week which would typically work best for you and try to make sure you're getting in and training. And again, put a cap on that. As I said already, it's very easy to lose time in your own home gym. So put a cap on it, whether that be having to set a timer, a reminder, there's plenty of apps on your phone that are for free that are typically used for like other styles of training where you only have like 90 minutes between rounds, whatever the case is, but really make sure you hold yourself accountable. That way you're really pushing yourself while in the home gym. Now, again, unfortunately, it's not the case where you should be training with a lot of people because again, six foot rule. Um, but normally that is again, a benefit of having a home gym. You could have your friends over, family over, whatever the case may be. And again, there are a lot of benefits of having a home gym, but you do have to make sure you're doing the right thing in terms of setting yourself up for success. Otherwise you're going to find you're trying to flip this stuff on Facebook as soon as that quarantine is lifted. So hopefully those tips help you again, just some quick, easy, simple, basic ones. But I do find those have helped me greatly, not only for training in the gym, but working from home, which maybe many of you are doing right now. If you have other tips, leave them in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.